everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing how to find the cube root of a number. And this is a review because we did learn how to do this when we were figuring out what the radius was when we had the volume of a sphere. So let's just get started. So in our previous geometry topic, we learned about numbers that are perfect cubes and we call them perfect cubes because their cubed root um, is a whole number. So here are the first 12 perfect cubes. We have 1, 8, 27, 64, all the way up until 17, 28. So again, when we're talking about cubed, it's saying that 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 8. So if we're finding the cubed root of 8, it's thinking what number multiplied by itself 3 times gives us 8. So now take a look at these pictures that we have here. We've got cubes here, and the reason why we call them perfect cubes is if we find the volume of this first cube, to find the volume of a cube is base times width times height, so we have a unit of 1 times 1 times 1, and 1 cubed is 1, so that's how we get 1 cubed is 1. Looking at the second one, we have, this is a cube that's 2 by 2 by 2, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so the volume of this cube is 8, and as well, there are 8 cubes, smaller cubes, that make up this bigger cube. And the next one here, we have 27 individual small cubes made up into this cube, and then this is a 3 by 3 by 3 cube, so the volume of this cube is 27. So this is kind of an explanation of why we have them called as perfect cubes and their whole numbers. So let's take a look at our first couple of examples of finding the cubed root. So in letter A, we have the cubed root of 8. So this one's quite easy because we can look at our chart and we see that we have 8 right here, which tells us that 2 cubed is 8. So that means a number multiplied by itself 3 times over that gives us 8 is going to be 2, so 2. And then for letter B, we've got the cubed root of negative 27. So again, we can look at our chart, look for the number 27, here it is, and 3 cubed is 27, but we've got a negative sign here. So that's going to tell us now that for our answer, we're going to have negative 3 instead. So the reasoning behind this, though, is if we have negative 3 multiplied by itself, right? So think about it, we have a negative number multiplied by a negative number. Well, this is going to give us a positive number, and if we take another negative number, if we do this positive number times this negative number, we're going to get a negative number. So that's why we have to do negative 3. And then in letter C, we've got a fraction. We've got the cube root of 1 over 64. So just like we did when we did the square roots and we had fractions, we could take the square root of the numerator, sorry, the cube root of the numerator and the cube root of the denominator. So the cube root of 1 is going to be 1, and the cube root of 64, if we look down in our chart right here, is going to be 4. So then we've got 1 over 4, or if you wanted to give this as a decimal, 0 0.25. So let's take a moment to pause the video to try out these three questions. So moving on to example two, we're going to evaluate expressions involving cube roots. So for letter A, we've got 2, and then right beside it, we've got um, the cube root of 216, but negative 216. So we have to remember that since we see these two beside each other like this, what that's telling us is that there's a multiplication sign that we don't see. So we've got really 2 is being multiplied to the cube root of negative 216. So we've got 2 times, now we can look at our chart again looking for 216, here it is, so that means the cube root of 216 is 6, but this is negative, so that means my answer needs to be also negative, so this is going to be negative 6, and then I've got 2 times negative 6, which gives us negative 12. And then, looking at number B, we've got um, the cubed root of 125 cubed. So similar to when we had the square root of something squared, what happens is we just end up getting the number itself. So what's nice is we just get 125 and then plus 21. So if we just need a little bit more understanding on this one, if we do what's inside the parentheses first, the cube root of 125 is 5. And then I get 5 cubed, which is going to give me 125. So do we see how we get back to what we had at the beginning? And then we can just evaluate 125 plus 21, which gives us 146. So down below, we've got two more try questions to practice evaluating the expression and very similar to what you just looked at for letters A and B. 
So here in our third example, we're going to be solving equations using the cube root. So we've got letter A that says x cubed is equal to 216, so that means some number cubed is equal to 216. So it's really handy to have our chart available so we can look for the number 216, and here it is. So 6 cubed is equal to 216, so that number that's cubed that gives 216 is 6. But if we're going to show our work, we could show that what we're doing for this problem is taking the cubed root to both sides, and then that's how we get that x is equal to 6. All right, so looking at num letter, sorry, letter B, we've got negative 1 over 4, and then n cubed is equal to 2. So again, when we're solving equations, we are going to follow PEMDAS, or order of operations, backwards. So if we look at our variable, it's here, and it's being cubed. So this has to be the last thing that gets done. So the first thing I need to do is something with a negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 over 4 is being multiplied to n cubed, so I could divide both sides by negative 1 over 4, or I could, because this is a little bit easier for me, I'm going to rewrite this as negative n cubed over 4. Um, and then I have that as equal to 2. And then it's a little bit easier to see that I can multiply both sides by 4 here, so that this cancels, and then I get negative n cubed is equal to 8. So I could have now n cubed is equal to negative 8, because if I divide both sides by negative 1. Um, and then I'm looking at the cubed root of both sides. And n is going to be now looking at my chart, looking for 8. Here it is. So 2 cubed is 8, so that means the cube root of negative 8 is going to be negative 2. So n is equal to negative 2. So here are your last three try it questions for this video. Um, these should be relatively simple. Number 6 should be nice and easy. Uh, number 7, we've got b cubed times 3. So you have to think what happens first in this equation. And then lastly, for number 8, we've got a couple of more steps. So again, following PEMDAS backwards. So hopefully you're seeing that this should be your first step here, this positive 8.